Hello. Good morning. Hi. Thanks for joining us all this morning. Um, joined by Serena and Kira, who, if features tomorrow, would be her 50th cap. So pleased to be joined with, with them both. Um, Anton, should we kick off with you? Hi. Nice to see you both. Um, Serena, let's start with the question I know you're expecting. Look, we are used to seeing the same team. We're used to seeing a sort of very established 11, <coughs> but now World Cup qualification sorted. WSL starts this week. Can we expect to see changes tomorrow against Luxembourg? Yeah, we, ha we still have one training session to do. Uh, we were still recovering. Um, seeing the, the, the beginning of this week and how we approach this week with every player coming in very differently, with different load, with different minutes after the Euros, you might expect some changes. Oh, exciting. <laughs> 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 Um, how's it going to feel to play back in front of a home crowd, another you know packed out, packed out, and what be like a bit of a homecoming, I suppose, celebration at Stoke? Yeah, I think so too. That's really exciting, and the support of the fans has been great uh, in the Euros. But they keep coming now, so tomorrow it will be thirty thousand people coming to watch us, and we really want to show again uh, our game and uh, get make a little celebration, nice football game. Serena, I'm going to have a slightly different question. Obviously, you qualified for the World Cup. Um, that comes with different sort of, you know, it's, it's a very different tournament. And one of the things we'll see is, is VAR. We've seen over the weekend in the Premier League the challenges that come with that. How, how much of a concern, is it a concern for, as, a, as a coach, you know, when you go into these tournaments, when you come into games, when it comes to VAR, considering are you sure how it's actually going to be refereed? Yeah, well, the VR, you know, came into football. We've had it in the tournaments now, so we just prepare for it. And I think... Um, I think it's in the women's game was improving too. I think the last, the first time we did it uh, was getting used to it. I think it went a lot better now. Uh, as long as it doesn't take too much time to make the final decision, it's it's better for the game. I think. Thanks, uh, Kira. Fifty caps. That's <laughs> press. Pretty damn exciting. Um, how are you feeling going into it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if I'm if I'm in the team, then it's a it's exciting. I didn't think, um, you know, when I was younger, I would ever get to fifty caps for my country. So yeah, it, it'll be a proud moment for me and my family. With that sort of, you know, with 50 caps, is that kind of thing you get a chance to reflect on, on the journey? Um, yeah, I think um, still not even had time really to reflect on the Euro so much, um, straight back into it. But um, yeah, I'm sure after the game tomorrow, um, I'll probably sit down with my family at some point and we'll, we'll have a bit of a reminisce of, yeah, where I've come from and, and my journey in football. It's a big week with England, obviously, but it's a big week with WSL starting this week. I don't need to tease to tell you the transfer window closes this week as well. <laughs> How, like, where are you at with, with your future going, going into this week? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm here to talk about England and um, the game tomorrow. Um, my focus is on England right now. So, um, yeah, I'm not really here to talk about um, what's going on club-wise, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Anton. Hi, Serena. Lovely Hi. to see you again. Um, when you've got a team who have won the Euros and qualified for the World Cup, how do you get them enthusiastic about Luxembourg at Stoke on a Tuesday night? <laughs> Well, I think, uh, yeah, you know, this team is so eager to do well uh, and to show. Uh, that's what, what we've shown all the time. And it's obviously really easy when you're in the Euros. But I think also now we're playing Luxembourg. It's all done in the, in the qualification. But we also know tomorrow 30,000 people come and watch us. And that's really exciting. But we also seen in training sessions. So we played, we played Saturday. Then the finishers go into training. And it's so sharp. And it's... It's such a good level. The, the team just wants to train and do well and, and do well every day in every moment that we get. So I expect, again, a very energetic team that really wants to show and wants to score lots of goals. And, of course, conceding none. <laughs> With Ellen and Jill retiring, you've lost a lot of experience, but you've also lot, lost a lot of age without being rude to them. Um, <laughs> I think Lucy is now the eldest player at the age of 30. Does it feel like a younger squad? Um, no, it doesn't really feel like a long squad. It it does. It's different without them because they're so big personalities on and off pitch, and they bring so much experience. So the dynamics of the group just change a little bit. Uh, we just have to adapt that new situation. And yes, we do miss them a little bit still, um, but we take a little more time uh, and, and adapt. And then what also happens? Then other other players will hopefully step up. Uh, what what? other players already did because it wasn't just the, those two the more players that are really big personalities already in this team um, but we'll see what happens in the future with people stepping up here are things like world cup qualification has become a bit of a formality for this team over the last few years but was there a, a big sense of relief over the weekend 
Um, I don't think it was relief. I think um, we look forward to those sort of games. You want to be playing in the World Cup qualifiers. You know, Austria are a good team. They had a, a great Euros as well. Um, but no, I, I don't think it was relief. I think we're confident in our own abilities. And um, yeah, we played a good game. So I think it was just excitement to be back together after the Euros and, and yeah, get playing with each other again. Normally we'd see some sort of celebrations after an achievement like that, but I guess you guys celebrated so well <laughs> after the Euros. Uh, how big was the party over the weekend? Um, I think it was difficult. I think obviously with us being in different places in terms of at club and stuff, I think you know some of the girls had to go and train, as Serena said, after the game. So we were kind of separated a little bit, but we came back to, to the hotel together and obviously had post-match, which was nice. But um, there were definitely muted celebrations compared to <laughs> the Euros. <laughs> I'm not sure anything's going to compare no, to those celebrations. <laughs> Um, final one for me, 50 caps. Who are you going to have in the stadium tomorrow night watching, supporting you? Um, my mum, uh, dad, grandma, granddad um, and family friends. So, yeah, it's, um, it's an exciting game for everyone. Nice. Thanks very much, Joe. We'll take questions from the floor. We'll go to Tom at The Telegraph. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Serena, can I ask you a bit about the qualifying process? I know it's not your fault that you've been winning by big score lines because you're just doing as best as you can and probably not... Luxembourg, Latvia and all the Macedonians for either because they don't have the professional money and that sort of thing. But would you like to see things change in the future so you perhaps have more games against some of the other top nations and, and fewer meetings with, with, with teams like the one you're yeah. facing tomorrow? Yeah, we talked about this earlier, of course. Uh, I think um, we need we need to, do, to make changes if it's better for the women's game. It's better for the development of the women's game. And I do think sometimes a, sc a bigger score is okay. But when, the, when that's all the time, you must question yourself, is that good for the team that loses that much? And it's good for the team for the team that wins that much? And it's it's not an exception, but it's more a rule. Um, and then you should might, might want to change some, make some changes uh, for the benefit of the game in both countries. And that um, I think that discussion has been going on for a while, also UEFA and FIFA. So we'll see what where that brings us. And would you like to see perhaps an equivalent of the Nations League that we see in the men's game where you get you get a little league where you can play the likes of Denmark, Sweden, Germany, etc.? Yeah, well, I, I don't think for me now it's it's what, what the solution is to say. I think p people are working on that. There's collaboration, there's communication uh, with, with, I think, federations, uh, some people from federation and, and UEFA. So I think uh, let's keep it with them. And they, they all want it for the best of the game. Okay, no, thank you very much. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. We'll go to Catherine at the mail. Hi, Serena. Um, when we spoke to Alessia Russo last week, she said um, the number nine position is something she's still learning and adapting to. And obviously, she got the start against Austria and scored the goal. Um, but what I thought was quite interesting is sometimes she dropped a little bit deep and came over to the wing um, at times, which is something Ellen White used to do earlier in her career before she kind of became known as that box striker that would sort of just um, become that poacher almost in, in um, the six-yard box. And I just wondered uh, whether you kind of want your number nine to you know, do those other roles, sometimes drop deep, sometimes come to the wing, um, or whether you kind of want them sort of staying in and around that uh, that that box? Yeah, I th no, we talk a lot about principles and how we want to create chances and score goals. Uh, and you want your players in the best position uh, who can score goals the best, to be in the best position at the moment the ball comes in front of the goal. So um, we really want wanted Alessia to be in, in and around the 18-yard box. Uh, when the ball gets there and when once in a while you go into the corner because that's the solution for that moment you have to do it uh, but there's some things you know you, your, your starting task uh, is, is a little closer in the center of the pitch and dropping deep sometimes can absolutely be a solution if you want to create a load lo overload or something but then someone else needs to make a run behind the things like that and then just on a different theme, obviously, after the Austria game, we saw the England fans waiting for you outside the stadium, chanting your name. I know you don't always like to take the praise and um, the centre of attention, but um, obviously you're well loved by the England fans and that's not something that England managers necessarily always get. So it, it must be nice for you to kind of have that, have that support. Yeah, it's nice. It's, yeah, it is absolutely nice, but um, I think it's all about the players. And um, you know when they perform well, I can, I, I'm doing well too, and and we we work together, we work as a team, so it's always about the team. Uh, but it's nice that the, well, at least or first of all that the, the people come to Austria and to watch us, that's really nice. That support now they come all to the stadium, and cheer for us, and uh, I'm now one of part of them that they cheer for. 
Thanks, Catherine. Um, we just asked the photographers to take a pause now, if that's OK, and we will go to Sandra at the Sun. <coughs> Hi, Serena. Hi, Akira. Um, first question for you, Serena. I mean, the team has been relentless in terms of the results and the performances. I mean, what more do you want to see from them in terms of, I mean, the, you know, qualifications in the bag, but what more do you want to see from them in terms of this game? Are you looking to maybe break another scoring record, perhaps, or...? I mean, what, 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 what do you hope to see from them from yeah, tomorrow's just, game? Yeah, again, a, a very energetic game. Uh, and, and that people see that we collaborate as a team, that we enjoy the game and that we're in possession all the time. So we just, tomorrow we want to be in possession as much as possible because the, the level, their level compared to ours, there is a big difference. So we should show that, I think. And then, of course, again, we want to create many chances and score lots of goals. And what that brings on the pitch, I don't know yet. We don't point it out in how many goals we have to score. Uh, that's very result related. We want to win this game. We want to get a good win, and we want to take everything out of it, especially in possession, but also win it back when we don't have possession moments of the game. And over the last few days, how have um, the newer players like Eb Ebony and, and Lauren been settling in? I mean, how have they found it within within the camp and with you know amongst the likes of Kieran, what have you, and players who've been there for quite a while? Yeah, they're enjoying themselves. Um, um, th it has been a, a different week. Like, well, Ebony has been in our camp last September. That has been a year, so we can see some difference now. She's, she's now a year further in the development. For Lauren, for me, it was the first time she was with the Engl England squad. And the first three days of training session, we it was really adapted to where the players came from. So it's, it has been a little different week. But of course, we have seen some things of them in our team in the training sessions we did do. Uh, and for Lauren, she made her debut, so that was really nice. And this is now the next training we'll do. So uh, I think they're adapting well, they're enjoying themselves, and that's what we want, and that they feel, OK, what's this about? What's the level? What do I need to do to to compete, to get to, st to stay in this squad and maybe compete with minutes? And beyond, minutes. Th beyond this game, how much are you looking forward to, to the USA and perhaps, you know, perhaps knocking them off their perch a little bit and letting them know that England are here and, you know, we're ready to come and take the cup next year, perhaps. <laughs> well, you're going really fast now. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> <laughs> so let's first play tomorrow. And yeah. yes, we're really excited now. It's, we're qualified, so now we know it's it's definite that we play the USA uh, October 7th in a packed uh, Wembley. And uh, that's an going to be an occasion too. But yes, most of all, it's a, it's a game that we play against the number one of the world. Uh, and we really want to compete to the best countries uh, in, in the women's game to see where we are and what we need to do. And from now, it's just everything is getting to prepared for the World Cup next year. And it's a great game to see where we are at that moment. Right, thanks. And congrats on 50 caps, uh, Kira. I mean, how do you feel you've evolved under Serena? And what do you hope to do in terms of the next 50 games you play for England? Yeah, I think um, the first thing under Serena that I've found is a bit, bit of consistency. I think um, I probably struggled a little bit with that before she came in. Um, yeah, I think she's kind of just given me the confidence to go and play my game and um, it's all about decisions and what we want to do on the ball. It's not one way is the right way, it's kind of what the player sees and I think that encourages me to, to play forward and, and try passes that maybe I wouldn't have done in the past. Um, but as I said, I think it's just about carrying on this consistency now and the form I found in the Euros, I think a personal goal of mine is to, to keep bringing that forward and in the games against you know the, the tougher opposition. That's great. Cheers. Thanks very much, Kieran. Thanks, Sandra. Yes, we'll go to Megan. Just one for Kira. Um, obviously, sold out Wembley final for the Euros, sold out tomorrow, and sold out against USA. How important is it to keep that going? Just you know, continu continuing into the future for the women's game. Yeah, massively. I think that's one of the, fo the one of the focuses for us after the Euros. It was to keep um, the fans coming in, and it's not just um, internationally; it's it's domestic level as well. I think. It's something that us as a team talk about quite a lot. Um, and we know that we have to keep playing good football and an attractive style of play to keep the fans in. And I think that's what we've done so far. But um, yeah, I think just where the women's game started and where I came in, that the difference is absolutely incredible. And I think it's just a really exciting time for women's football and hopefully we can keep pushing it forward. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. We can take a final question if there is one. Yeah, we'll go to Charlotte at the back. Thanks. Just a quick question for Serena, please. You said that there might be a few changes tomorrow. How much do you think this game, the new players maybe that you might bring in can stake a claim to be regular starters within your team? Well, we, we are, um, we're reviewing every game all the time. We're reviewing what we did in camp, in training sessions on the pitch. 
So this game, um, it, it will be a lot in possession. Uh, it's not the highest level, but um, it, of course, it's always an opportunity to show yourself and they're always competing. It's competing here, it's competing in training on the, and, and in, in games. It's also competing when you're with your club and showing uh, what just Kira said, consistency in your own game and, and perform with your club team and uh, getting minutes at your club team. And the total picture will, will give us all the information we need to make the right choices to make starting lineup. Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks to everyone. Look forward to seeing you in Stoke tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.